Hello, my fellow travelers. This is Maluche, and welcome back to No Man's Sky. I have been hard at work. I have researched everything that had to do with metal. So in a hundred mile radius, I basically went around uh, the planet, digging up all the buried research. And I've researched everything. Uh, the Well, not everything, but everything that had to do with metal. And then the stone floors, uh, the concrete floors. Because I didn't really like the metal floor, so I thought, okay, maybe the concrete works a little bit better. And yeah, I do like these concrete floors. They, they look pretty, pretty nice. For the metal parts, yeah, I had to change out everything, meaning that for the portal I had to rebuild it three times. Once for the floor, then for the back wall again, then for... Yeah, I had to build it a, a lot of times, but every time when you destroy it, you actually get your components back, so that's not really that hard. Uh, I built uh, two more of these uh, batteries and um, well yesterday I was kind of running out of pulse engine and it says I needed to farm tritium uh, and that is abundant in near space asteroid fields. Now I went into an asteroid field started uh, mining it up and that actually gave me gold and yesterday we didn't have gold for our uh what was it again the solar panels so today we can actually set up a solar panel now i kind of the sun comes up on that side and goes under on that side but we don't really have a lot of sun on this planet so i'm really wondering how it's gonna turn into milestone accomplished wanderer yeah 50. <laughs> we've been uh we've been running around a lot the longer I stay on this planet, the uglier I'm starting to find it, honestly. So yeah, it's, it is time almost to move move uh, away. As I said, this is a temporary base. Just something to figure out how the building works, how the materials looked. And uh, well, now we only need to make sure that we have stable power. So let's go into our uh, other menu so we have a better look at this. And then building. Decorations, no. Deck, yes. And I'm portable, no. Farming industry. And power. And then we have switches, battery, biofuel bio reactor, and a solar panel. Now, I really don't know how the solar panel works. Let's uh, twist it around. Ah, it doesn't matter. It always kind of looks the same. Okay, so let's place a solar panel. Let's place it, well, in the corner here. Not really sure how it's gonna and if it's even gonna work, because like I said, the sun comes up on the sun comes up on that side, so you can see it's actually directing itself to the point. So I'm not really sure if you're gonna generating 51 kps. It's actually generating power even if it doesn't see the sun. Uh, I was kind of wondering about that. Well, that's pretty pretty nice. Okay, so now we need to wire it up. And then we actually basically have constant flow of power, I think. So power and industry, electric, and then we hook this line up to that line. Yeah, hell yes, look at that, storing 60, storing 80, storing 90. So yeah, three batteries all storing power. That's pretty nice and all from one solar panel. So the solar panels actually work pretty nice and they don't even need to face the sun. How ridiculous is that? So it's generating 49, 50, 51. Well, that's pretty cool. So yeah, now we have constant power in our base for the teleporter. Hell yes. So we don't really need the biofuel reactor anymore. I'm kind of wondering if I should just put another battery in here. Just for safekeeping. So I'm not really sure how long a full battery will last us. It said something yesterday about how long it would last us. But it wasn't really long. An hour and a half, I think we calculated. Or an hour and 20 minutes-ish. So this would... Well, it doesn't matter. We have constant power now. In the night, it's gonna use from the batteries. In the day, it's just gonna charge up again. So I think with this, our base is actually semi-complete, our first starter base. So what is next? Next is first we need to change our view. Um, 
because well, if you have third person perspective why not use it right so we'll investigate the space station is the next step we're gonna need to do following the footsteps of the base computer's previous owner so uh i don't think i need anything here anymore we are running really low on ferrite dust because yeah this base cost me a lot of ferrite dust the rest we all pretty much have a lot of still well enough the sodium is kind of running lower as well so yeah time to set off time to go to the space station time to follow in the quest step that is providing us uh, where do we need to go over there For first glance, this planet really looks nice, but it was so hard to traverse the planet to actually look for all the different... And uh, let's take a step back, now that we're in outer space. Ooh, no, no, no. Uh, I need to change the <laughs> settings a little bit, maybe, because flying is still... We're having 13 seconds. Because, yeah, from first glance, the, the planet looked really nice, but then, uh, yeah, eventually it, it, it was like a red a fog constantly, and the clouds of fog in this game are, well, I'm just going to say straight, they're ugly. Uh, I'm not sure why, but they're, they're, they're really ugly. Alright, space station. But from what I remember, there's like two sides and then there's like a room inside and there's some NPCs there, there's a, there's a, a, a galactic terminal in there. And we're probably gonna need to explore the space station, find life forms to ask about the mysterious signal. Okay. We've got stairs over here. Why is these stairs when you have jetpack? Ooh, holy crap. This is not how I remember it. Like I said, it used to be like a balcony, a small balcony, and then just uh, like one room. And then you had a, a adjacent room, which you needed uh, the, the basin. So there's a portal here, a teleporter here. We needed to talk to people, scientist entity. Traveler entity D. Yeah, I've learned a couple words extra while doing my uh, farming. Despite their unfamiliar words, there is something about this alien manner that implies we have met before. Perhaps they know the one who came before me. Ask about the other traveler. The life form pauses before turning away. They either did not hear me or are choosing to ignore my question. How dare you ignore me? And you. Okay. The alien elegantly metal shell springs to life as I approach. They study me, lights flashing around the visor. Perhaps they know something about the message left at the base computer. Ask about 16. A glazed look passes over the life form's visor. The number has had some strange effect on them. They seem reluctant to speak further. So yeah, not the NPC we need. Let's check out this room. Holy crap. So what are you? Cardographer. Okay. No idea what he's saying. The metallic being chatters away, pouring forth words in a language I cannot understand. Not yet, at least. But when I blink, I see that some red lights started at me at the distress beacon. Repeat 16. We are watching you, traveler friend. Find what we have left you. So the alien speaks, the words are not their own. A string of code is echoed back to me through the red glare, locked directly into my exosuit. The crimson light fades away, and I see the life form staring at me through the visor. Whatever has happened, they do not appear to have seen it. I should leave, perhaps my base computer would be able to make something of this code. Alright, so this is the dude we actually need. Every system has a space station serving as its hub. Speaking to life forms aboard the station brings a chance to trade, learn words, or gain standing. Visit technology merchants to upgrade your ship and equipment. Visit the cartographer for directions to outposts and other buildings. Take mission missions, okay, take missions from the mission agent to learn valuable rewards. And use the teleport to instantly return to your base. 
Oh, hell yes. The encoded message has been stored for later use. When ready to leave, use the teleport terminus to return to your base. So, yeah, now I know why we needed to build the teleporter. What are you? Envoy. That's like an ambassador, right? I've seen this alien's insignia before. They are a member of the Explorer's Guild. There's guilds in this game? Holy crap. They do not seem interested in the data I have to offer. Perhaps the mission listing agent on the station might have a way to prove my worth. Holy crap, there's ambassadors and guilds in this game. What are you, mission agents? Alright. The life form gestures apologetically. Their exact meaning is unclear, but it's apparent that there is no work for me here. Okay. <laughs> now we have the Galactic Trade Terminal. Okay, nice. We have a room here that opens. See, this is like the what I, what I remember. It was like something like this. And then you had... There's nothing here, nothing there. Is there anything actually in this room? Search. Oh, carbon. All right, nice. Free, free stuff is always nice. Can I get carbon? No, I can't get carbon from this one. Not from this one either. Some more aliens here, but pure ent entity airbrids. Navigator. Scientist. Oh, look, there are spaceships coming in. Why aren't there spaceships coming into my base? Oh, there's another side. Oh, hell yes. We need to go to the other side. Let's quickly check. Locate the pilot to begin trade. The electronic life form delighted lights narrow and focus on my visor. They take a few seconds to analyze my data before indicating their willingness to trade. It seems that their starship is also available for purchase for the right price. See, this is how I always like upgraded my spaceships on my first play or well back in the day when I played No Man's Sky. Like I, I actually made a semi a base, uh, well a base not, I, I basically just stick around the trading posts where I set up my base now. And then from there, I just bought in the ships that were better and better and better. Uh, make an offer on life form starship. So it's a B class, negotiate price. So mine is a C class. As you can see, it's already had more unlocks. What's the price? One million. Holy crap. Yeah, I really don't have a lot of uh, <laughs> money yet. 600,000. So yeah, no way I can actually buy that ship. Okay, let's take a look up here. If, there be, if there's anything different here. Not a room we can enter, I think. Oh, there's actually a warrior. A hireling. An analyst. There's another terminal here. And then this is the room where you need the V pass. Yeah, this is this is basically what I remember. Like a room like this, NPCs in it, and then a room where you needed the V one pass. Yeah, the the space stations definitely have changed a lot. Holy crap! Ooh, new gun, weapon terminal. Compare. I think that's the same. Yeah, C class, C class. Five slots, six slots, so it has one slot less than mine. Yeah, definitely not gonna buy this one. Then what is this? Multi-tool upgrade station. Ooh, that's something I like. Augment technology slots or improve multi-tool class. Add slots for free when a multi-tool expansion slot. I don't have that. I can buy a new slot for 100,000 or 10,000 nanites. Yeah, my currency is a little needed right now. Technology merchant. What the hell do you do? Purchase upgrade modules. Okay. Oh, and they require these nanites. I don't really have a lot. 235. So C rank, B rank, A rank, S rank. So S rank is the high. Yeah, look at the price. Of course, S rank is that. So scatter blast modules, spitter. Powerful upgrade for the spitter, a pulse spitter. Used to begin upgrade modules, flexible damage hyper, reload time, clip size, and fire rates. Scanner module. 
includes scan radius and significantly increases the value of discovered data. Ooh, this might actually be a really good upgrade because if we constantly like scan stuff, we're gonna earn more money from it. That might be pretty good. But yeah, we lack the nanite clusters. What are you? Starship research? Okay, so an NPC to upgrade your ship, I think. The life form facial lightnings brightens as they see me. They produce a data pad health with balance, perfect balance from the tips of the silicone fingers. Okay, technology merchant you know, offers installable starship upgrades. Okay, for nanite clusters. So yeah, again, uh, a vendor for. Yeah, we don't really. We need to know how we can get more nanite clusters because this is going to be really important. We have 571 starship shield upgrades. Positron. Damage output, fire rate, and overheat time. Yeah, these are important upgrades. Holy hell. What are you? Merchant. Exocraft. Okay. Installable exocraft upgrades in exchange for nanite clusters. Yeah, the sprinting is way too slow. That's like one of the first ones I kind of want to do. Cannon module. Exosuit starship. 480. It doesn't really have a lot of modules. And then oh, so many. Technology merchant. <laughs> is this going to be an entire episode of me just spending time here on this... <laughs> so much to investigate. So underwater protection module, terminal, movements. Uh, supremely powerful upgrade for the exosuit movement systems. Potential improvements include jetpack tank capacity, jetpack fuel efficiency, and exosuit speed boost duration. Yeah, this is definitely one of the things uh, that we kind of want. Like, uh, the sprint speed is... This is for sprint speed, right? Shield movements. Yeah, I think this is... Yeah, the movement ones are for the... Because my sprint is, like, really, really low. It, it, it Traversing... What the hell are these? Appearance modifier? Oh, hell yes! <laughs> oh, you can actually change how you... Okay. Uh, this is gonna take me... I have no idea, like... Anomaly, Viking, Traveler, Carvrex, Keg, and then... Body Shapes. Different body shapes, raise, stay with. No. So let's stay with anomaly for now. And then body shapes, let's quickly go through them. So fat, small guy, tinny guy, regular guy, and big guy. Okay. So heads, oh, primary colors, markings on the heads, helmet types. Oh, heck yes. Uh, I'm gonna be rather busy for the next hour or something like that. Like, I can go nuts on these. Like, holy hell. So, yeah, I'm gonna cut out here. And I'm gonna see if I can create my personal little traveler that, well, kind of would resemble my liking. Uh, something like that. So, yeah. Uh, well, for you guys, I'll be right back. So, here is what I came up with. I kind of like it. Let's uh, scroll around. So yeah, green and red with uh, a little black. Because uh, basically I'm, I'm, well, <laughs> my name is Meluncha and it derives from, well, small melon, watermelon. And a watermelon is green, red and black, right? So uh, yeah, <laughs> I took the colors that fancy my name. And I really kind of, the, the pants is, is awesome. But if you look at the legs... Uh, we usually took, let's take the gloves, so for the gloves we all took the dark green and if we go for the legs we actually took the light green because if we go for the, I like this green color better, like the darker green, it's not as flashy but it doesn't apply to the rest of the set, the rest of the set is like more yellow, yellowy green. So if I go to the gloves and I change uh, this one to this one, see that there's actually an offset on the different colors, although they are both green. So, uh, yeah, kind of need to go for the dark green for some, and then for the pants I needed to go with the regular green, so I'm not really sure 
But yeah, I kinda kinda like this and I had a second build as well because feel I really um, enjoy this one. Um No, I don't wanna leave the So for the second character I built a uh, Traveler. Uh the heads of the travelers are insane. Uh, regular alien and then a kind of a robot alien. This one is really amazing, but I can just only imagine that everybody almost picked this one because it really looks amazing. Like a giant triangle and another alien heads. And I like this uh, alien head the uh, most. It's not too big of a head, but I, I do like the tentacles out of it. So uh, yeah, uh, nope, don't apply that change. So yeah, I made two characters. I might change a little bit later on, but for now I'm, I'm really happy about my little dude. And how can I not take the Boba Fett helmet? Like, honestly, how can I not take the Boba Fett helmet? That's that's just... that. Uh, the second I saw it, I was like, yeah, this is the helmet I want. So that was pretty easy. Same with the pants. The pants was uh, rather, rather quickly that I chose it, but the color scheme took me quite a while. But I'm pretty happy. I might, like I said, I might change it later on, but for now this feels more me. This feels more like I'm really playing the game right now. So yeah, you can change your character in this game. Really, really nice feature that not everybody will look the same way. So, starship outfitting. Okay. Drones deployed to a star a target starship. Radiant Pillar BC-1. Available upgrades, upgrade class and storage or melt the ship into scrap. Holy hell, you can actually melt your skip. Where to find upgrades? Upgrade start. Where to find upgrades? Using this outfitted station to increase the size of the starship's inventory or improve its base stats by upgrading its class. Oh, upgrades to specific functions such as weapon or engines can be purchased from techno technology. Ah, okay, so you need to buy the upgrades and then here you can implement the upgrades, I think. So, upgrade ship. Augmented inventory storage or improved starship. Apply augmentation, no. Purchase storage, a million units. Oh crap, that's expensive. And upgrade the class to 10,000 nanites. So that's, that's freaking expensive. So I think we've seen everything now. The ship, the, uh, well, the, the change of character look, then the exosuit. Ooh, we have not seen this yet. Oh, I can... So the difference between slots here and slots here is that here you can actually have double the capacity of your inventory. Like if you can have, I'm not sure what the max is, but let's say 5,000. It's not, I'm, I'm really not sure if it's 5,000 or not, but let's just say 5,000. Then in your cargo, you can actually take double the amount. So I'm not really sure if, if it's better that we upgrade this one first or this one first. Purchase inventory slot 5,000 and for your cargo, it's the same amount. So I might actually do like cargo. Yeah, upgrade cargo. I can hold more in there. Can we use this multiple times? Because I have more money. I can't. So does that mean that every, every well, uh, space station has one of these up? Great modules and every time I go to a space station that I can actually upgrade my suit. That would mean uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 16 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 24, 24, cargo, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 8 is 48, minus 3, is 43 43 and how much was it here 28 43 28 that means i need to visit over 60 or 70 uh well of these vessels to be actually upgrade my entire power suit that's gonna take a while that's really gonna take a while but yeah uh, really nice i think we've seen everything now so we need to use the uh teleporter over there some more ships arrived. Oh, that's an ugly one. Yeah, there are some nice ships in here, but there are also some <laughs> ugly ships in here. 
So yeah, upgrading uh, to our next vessel is not going to be an easy task for me because I'm kind of uh, a Nicky Pitter. So Station Terminus. What does what does you do? Oh, Temp Home, Temp Home Current System. Uh, your bases. Okay, and I'm warp to Temp Home. All right. All right, yeah, let's go back home. Back home, nice. Okay, so one thing I, I kind of wanted to do yesterday as well. Um, I put in the, uh, and, well, as you can see here, the, the base, uh, the base thingy uh, where you can locate and check if your uh, structures is uh, viable for building on. And this one says Uniswap Archive Search reveals previous base registration constructed terminus on a new site. So I cannot. Build this. I was kind of thinking like um, I was actually building a staircase down here, um, as you can see, like with uh, placing these. I need to place the ramps because I was kind of like obstructed in walking up here. Uh, so I placed these ramps, and then I kind of wanted to make a staircase down because I fall off a lot, and I kind of wanted to move this one. And I was thinking like if I build a new one in here and set this one as my base location. I might well be able to move this one, but yeah, once you place this one, you cannot move it anymore. The only thing you can do is like upload and destroy your uh, base. So kind of sad about that. And yeah, it's nighttime, so it is not generating, but as we can see, our portal is still active. Our light is still active. So how much do we have? 7,000. 7,000 time remaining until dream one hour and 28 minutes. But that's for this one. This one is taking a 1 hour 28 minutes. So I'm not really sure how this works now. Because they all say... Does it take power from all three at the same time? And then making the time longer? Or does it actually take only from one? And then actually the other two... Count the same as the first one? Because I was thinking if you have... More stored. That it would give a longer time. Yeah, an hour, 29 minutes, so 16%. I guess later on we're gonna come back to this one and then uh, check out if we can actually get 100% storage on this one. Because uh, I'm not really sure, I think now, by now, like two days should have been gone. Uh, or at least, yeah, at least two days. Like I've been building my little, little character here. I'm really happy about the, the new look. Uh, the little character here uh, for at least an, an hour and a half. So I'm not really sure if, if this is... Maybe we need to place more solar panels. But yeah. Visit the base computer. Use archives to decoder the code acquired from the space station. Okay. Archives terminated. Select new task. Okay. Begin deciphering. Decoding 16, 16, 16. Message follows. The traveler finds their wings. Fly to us and claim your place among the stars. Okay. Signal acquired. Life signs detected. Reach the decoded. Is that in here? Possible distress signal arrives in 20 minutes. And. Where's our, our spaceship? Is, I was thinking like, where the hell? Because we teleported. Is our spaceship still on the... the Well, the... the, the oh, I forgot its name already. The big base in the sky. <laughs> so, yeah. Radiant Pillar. Let's go check it out. We do have some time left. Go up, go up before we actually destroy our ship. Alright, let's head out to the location. Encoded signal received. What the hell? Oh, this is a freighter! Oh, hell yeah! So, what are you? Wreck of the Uberari uh, 6? I think. 6 or 4 or... I, I'm so bad at numerals. Lock damaged. Partially records available. The signal has led me to the wreck of a freighter. A colossal fragment of metal scattered across the landscape. Where these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long-forgotten ruin? 
Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log, blinking and awaiting inputs. Require log. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. The anomaly, <clears throat> excuse me. The anomaly comes from the stars. Take flight. The schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. Take the blueprint. I'll pull the blueprint from my computer, but this hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. Well, I found it though. So, FTL propulsion drive that allows a starship to attain warp speed and jump between neighboring systems. The user is advised to access the hyperdrive system through the galaxy galactic map. So we need chromatic metal and a microprocessor. Let's install the technology. So microprocessors, we could buy them from the intergalactic uh, trading uh, here and then chromatic metal. Hyperdrive installed. Okay. But now, what do we need to fuel it? Warp cells or a warp hypercore? Holy crap. Hyperdrive successfully installed, return to ship. Okay. Auto diagnostics report. Hyperdrive successfully installed. Hyperdrive fuel status empty. Yeah, I know. My hyperdrive is complete. Perhaps I really find answers out there among, amidst the stars. Without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. Tune the scanner to antimatter. And then scan. Search the antimatter traces with the starship scanner 2. Atmospheric interference detected from planetary scan from orbit. Okay, so we need to go out of this planet. There we go. Let's stop here. Send you amidst the. Yeah, we still have a lot of planets to actually visit in this solar system before we move on to the next one. Antimatter detected. The traces target locked. Well, we have researched that one, so let's go pick up some any matter. Ooh, we found a base, apparently. Okay, let's sit down. Isn't this the big red planet we started off on? I do think so. It's broken. Forsaken terminal. Some free resources here. Sodium, that's always good. Anything else here? Universal language database. So we can learn some new words, I think. Terminal line, universal translation service reach, life form dictionary available. Learn word. The Corvax word for convergence. Okay. Let's look through here. Condensed carbon. Okay, so we need to access this Forsaken Terminal. So residential goo. Let's take that out. Terminal Align. Selecting key. Decrypting. Success! The terminal is clogged with an unnerving pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make a note to avoid getting closer. The device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It prints out a blueprint for antimatter, com co accompanied by a strange message. You will find us when the time is right. 16, 16, 16. Uh, is this is 16 the answer to everything? <laughs> okay, so we need chromatic metal and condensed carbon to make any matter, and we have both. All right, so let's go into our lock and make any matter. Can we make a couple? Yeah, we can make a couple. Nice. So gather. Okay, craft antimatter. Okay, assemble antimatter housing. Antimatter housing. So we need oxygen and ferrite dust. We really don't have a lot of ferrite dust. We need a planet with a lot of stones. 
And so now we can make the warp cell. Okay, so you need antimatter and a an housing for the antimatter to actually make the warp cell. Alright, nice. Craft warp cell. Fuel the hyperdrive. I'm quickly gonna check if there's anything else in here before I actually leave. Damaged machinery. Some more goop. Okay. Let's just restore shields. Some boxes, with some free materials. Research specimen. Test subject Maluncha. New Corvex rank point of interest. Corvex rank 2 out of 9. Standing increased with the Corvex. So that's nice. Some, a box here. Uh, it's kind of dark. Let's uh, put on our lights as we have it. Alright. Anything else? That we are missing. Can't go through here. Can't go through there. I think we have covered everything. Okay, let's head back to the spaceship. Yeah, we need an Atlas Pass for this one. Use inventory or quick menu. We don't have quick menu bounds. It's inventory, hyperdrive, warp cell. Ooh, look at that. Like that's one fifth, one sixth, one tenth. I don't know. It's 20%, so one-fifth. That's not a lot. You need five to actually completely fill it. Oh, that's that's expensive. Hyperdrive refueled, launch into space to test interstellar halt to take off. But yeah, we're gonna leave that for the next episode. This is where I'm gonna cut out. Um, it's kind of kind of dark in here. Let's stand up here go that we have a nice little visual on our new little created come on oh, come on yep yep we go no that's not come on turn around it's 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 dark guys it's dark anyway this is where i'm gonna wrap up this episode guys uh if you want to see more of my let's play of no man's sky just hit that subscribe button it would always help out a lot i do hope you enjoyed the episode and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye bye